Hey guys, it is Mr. Dave with the Ray Kitty Creation Workshop and you are watching the Ray Kitty Science Project. Uh, we have lots of fun uh, experiments for you to do at home. We have lots of fun things that you can see that maybe you wouldn't get a chance to see elsewhere. Uh, and we just love bringing science to you. Uh, and so we really appreciate all of the folks here at Studio 519, all the hard work that they put in uh, into making these these videos fun uh, and trying to make me look like I know what I'm doing. So we really appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome. So uh, we are going to be doing some fun experiments today uh, with vomit. No, yeah, really. Uh, we are actually going to be using <clears throat> puke. It's not getting better, is it? Uh, what we're going to be working with is pellets. That sounds even grosser. What I have in here is owl pellets. Okay, now owl pellet may sound disgusting uh, and uh, it, it may sound a little like, yay, that's a great experiment you can do. Yeah, instead of one that I can do. But really, this is a wonderful, wonderful experiment to do at home, to do uh, if you have like clubs that you go to. Uh, owl pellets are, are very, very, very interesting. Okay, this is one of my favorites around my house. This is one of my favorites. If I do order these to do for a class, I always have to order extra uh, for my girls at home. Uh, my girls will actually make jewelry out of owl puke. Now, uh, that all sounds nasty until we get a little bit into the science of it. Okay, now owls uh, are not um, they don't take little tiny uh, petite bites of things, okay? If you've ever seen an owl get after an animal, it eats it. Like it pretty much will take that little mouse or vole or whatever it is uh, and devour that thing pretty much whole, okay? And what happens inside the owl's stomach is that the owl's stomach crushes the item. <laughs> we'll say item. Uh, <laughs> and squeezes out the material. Uh, so that it can digest uh, all of the nutrients from that animal. Now, it can't digest the entire animal. There are things that um, <clears throat> the enzymes don't break down. And those things are the same as maybe your cat at home. Okay? Uh, if you've ever been uh, lying on your bed in the middle of the night, and all of a sudden you hear, hit, 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 you, and you wake up as quickly as you can uh, and kick the cat out of the room as fast as you can because you know your cat is going to <clears throat> regurgitate an owl, or <laughs> not an owl pellet, hopefully, uh, but your cat is going to regurgitate a hairball, right? Uh, now, a cat usually gets its hairball. Most of our cats, domesticated cats, eat nice little kibble bits so they don't have a lot of bones and beaks in there, uh, but they also clean themselves. And when they do, they can't digest that hair so their stomach does about the same as an owl. It mashes it into a pellet and they regurgitate it. Now, I know that makes you much less interested in seeing what is inside of this little ball here. Now, you can purchase owl pellets, meaning, yes, I ordered puke on the internet and they sent it in a box in the mail. Now, um, I'm not sponsored or anything like that, but a wonderful place to get them is Oregon Owl Pellets. Um, they're a small company and they will send you the biggest pellets, okay? Uh, the pellets that I normally get uh, from some of your science places and different things like that are about half of this size, okay? So they are a lot smaller. When I opened up that box and these guys were in there, I was like, I am in for a treat, not something that I would eat. But I'm going to find some good stuff in these. So uh, you, you wonder, well, how much does it cost to buy a lump of owl puke. Well, these things here are really about $3, okay? So it's very, very, very inexpensive, okay? Uh, you can buy them by the box. You can buy them one at a time. Uh, they're usually a little more expensive if you buy them one at a time, but uh, even if you go up to about $7, this little thing right here is well, well worth it. So I recommend you go wherever you can just Use your little search engine uh, and ask AI where you can find some owl pellets uh, and you can order owl pellets from wherever to do this at home. And right now, you're thinking the same thing as when I teach classes and I say, okay, guys, we're going to dig in owl puke. And everybody says, I'm not. 
Uh, but then this is a fun one because I like classes that work like this. And, and if you have a student uh, with you, this is what's going to happen. You're going to see your students start out um, looking at it like this. And then within about five minutes, your student will go from looking at it like this to coming down and looking at it like this and they will be so excited uh, digging in that owl pellet, okay? So uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful experiment or science project to do at home. Now, what I have here uh, that I was attempting to get propped up, uh, but I have a chart, okay? Uh, this chart here you can also download off of the internet for free, um, and it has pictures of different things that you may find in your owl pellets, uh, if you are doing owl pellets, you can also come across owl pellets in the wild. Um, an owl will regurgitate about two pellets a day. Here in New Mexico, we have a lot of owls. So owl pellets are actually a pretty regular thing uh, that would be around, but they're hard to identify because they look like slimy rocks. Uh, and another thing is they have not been sterilized. Okay, these owl pellets that you purchase have been heat sterilized. So that is very important uh, that these are not going to have bacteria in them. They're not going to have um, any type of uh, things that you can catch or nasties like that. Uh, these have been heat sterilized. So if you come across an owl pellet in the wild, does that mean you can't dissect one in the wild? No, if you find one in the wild, what I do recommend very highly is that when you're using it or when you're dissecting it, uh, you, one, wait till it dries, okay? You may not want to put it in your oven, but you can uh, on a low heat to sterilize it. Uh, but wait till it dries, and if it's one from the wild, I want you to wear gloves, and I want you to wear a mask, okay? The same type of paper masks or cloth masks that, that we've been wearing, uh, you can wear one of those. But the reason is there may be little items that, that are not in a sterilized owl pellet, okay? So that's a safety thing for uh, working with owl pellets. Now these ones here have been sterilized, so you're gonna see me doing it without gloves. Uh, I have not the slightest amount of worry. Uh, I don't have a mask on. Um, you don't have to worry about it with a sterilized pellet, but I do wanna say if you find one in the wild, please don't pick it up and start breaking it open and things like that because there can be um, little uh, bugs and creepy crawlies in there that you don't want uh, infecting you. Okay, so uh, if you're doing them in the wild, Make sure you have an adult with you. You can put it in a little baggie uh, and wait till it dries and do it, but wear gloves and a mask, okay? But if you purchase them on the internet uh, and you have them send you some owl puke, let's get to kind of what it's going to look like. Now, we're probably just going to do this big one today, okay? Now, you say, how can uh, digging in vomit like that uh, be enough to uh, give us an entire episode worth of material? You will see once I get started. Now, as we saw in our chart here, and as we mentioned, an owl will eat the prey pretty much whole, okay? Now, that means pretty much, at least, especially in one of this size, one animal or full animal, uh, the remains will be in here, okay? And those remains are going to be, it's not slimy, Okay, so if you're thinking, hey, it's not slimy, you don't have to look away. Um, the remains are going to be hair and bone, and that's it. There's nothing else nasty in here. Uh, occasionally, you'll find grasses um, that the owl's enzymes weren't able to digest, but those grasses were either on the object when the object on the prey, uh, when the owl grabbed it, or in the stomach of the little mouse. Okay, uh, mouse or vole. Now, I have a pet mouse at home. It's actually, or it's actually a rat, uh, and it's actually my daughter. So I do have a love of our little vermin. Uh, so doing this is showing just very much what happens in nature. Okay, now I'm gonna just show it off before I break it up here a little bit. Uh, you can see that we've got some uh, harder type material here. Uh, and the rest of it looks kind of like a mud ball, okay? And that's why these are harder to find. Uh, when you purchase them, they actually have an owl farm where they take care of owls, uh, and so they know what the owls are eating that are in that area, uh, and they will collect the pellets that way, 
Okay, so we have our owl pellet here, uh, and we're going to kind of dig in. Now, you want to be gentle, okay? Uh, it's not super fragile, uh, but you don't want to fracture too many of the bones that are in here because we're going to be identifying some of those bones and seeing if we can find some of the things on this chart in our little owl pellet, okay? So what I have as far as tools is I have some tweezers, okay? Uh, and I have uh, some, this is just the end of a skewer, uh, and this is another part of a skewer, okay? So we have our tweezers and our skewers, and we're just going to kind of poke in uh, and open up our owl pellet, okay? Now, now we've opened it up. It looks like uh, just some kind of hair. This is mostly hair that you're seeing in here. Uh, we're seeing something interesting. That part that I want to show you was that lighter part on the side here. What it actually looks like it may be is feathers, okay, uh, that we saw on the outside. Where was that part? Yeah, right here, okay. So we're going to go ahead and pull that part off and see if we have a wing, okay. So we're going to dig into our owl pellet. Now, remember, because they eat the animal whole, uh, if you find a part that you're identifying, um, You'll, if you find one part and it is a vole or it is a rat or it is a, a certain type of animal, it's more than likely the rest of the parts that you find are going to be from that same animal. Now, you may find more than one animal in a pellet, okay? Uh, but the parts that you find will probably be from that same animal. Now, if we look here, we can see that I've got something showing up here, okay? So we're going to separate this up. This is the fur. Now, if you're doing this, if you've got an owl pellet, don't throw away this scrap fur, right? Because this scrap right here could be full of lots of teeth and lots of fun little things that you can find in that pellet, okay? So as I open this up here, what I have here is a little bone, okay? Now, this bone here, uh, I've got a... A bump on one side, I can identify it on that chart already just because I've done this before. Uh, and then I've got two little knobs here. So if you look on our chart and I were to turn it, I'll hold it with the tweezers, like this, you can see on that chart there uh, that we actually have, that is the hind limb of a rodent, okay? Rodent could be a rat, could be uh, all different types of rodents, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to put these little bones on here and we're going to look at them under the microscopes in a few minutes, okay? So we're going to collect a couple more out of here before we do. Uh, what we're hoping to find, kind of the golden, uh, if you find all of the treasure, is to find a skull, okay? Uh, and you will pretty often find a skull if the animal was in there. Now, the times that you would not find the skull is if it were crushed, uh, but normally you will find the skull in there, okay? So we're going to go through this piece, just kind of a precursory. I've got another little bone here. Uh, that is, um, that's actually that other hind limb. Okay, so we're going to put that other hind limb on here. And I'm not going to discard these pieces, but for sake of time, normally if you're doing this, uh, believe it or not, you can dig in this little thing. I will usually give students uh, an hour uh, just to dig through it. Okay, so you can have a lot of science fun and a lot of time having fun with the with just one pellet. Okay, so we're gonna. I'm curious about this thing here, though. Uh, let's see. Oh, you know what that is? It's grass. It's <laughs> yeah. That's just a piece of uh, some sort of um, organic like uh, plant material there. So that wasn't anything too exciting. So let's see. So we're going to dig into this one here, and let's see what we can find. I hope, oh, there we go. We've got something fun here. Uh, if you can see, I'm going to pull this part out with my little toothpick, uh, and we can see on here that we have that whole bump here of that pelvic bone. This is actually the pelvic bone uh, of probably a rodent. It could be a uh, shrew but it's probably just a rodent pelvic bone, okay? So let's see what else we've got in here. Uh, in this little smaller section here, 
I've got something larger going on over here. And remember, we're looking for that elusive skull, okay? So we'll see if we find one today. If not, we have some fun pieces that we've found already. Uh, but usually you'll have a skull. I've got another leg bone right there. Uh, and now I can pretty much say by the size of those leg bones, whatever it is, the skull is not in that material, okay? So that doesn't mean uh, there aren't bones in there, but the skull in itself is not in that material. Now I've got something here. I want to start being careful with it. Now a skull, uh, the skull has got some areas that are fragile. So once you do find one, I don't think this is a skull, uh, but once you do find one, you'll want to be careful with it uh, because it'll usually still have the teeth in it. Uh, and those teeth will slide right out. Just like you lose your teeth, uh, the, the same thing, those teeth, uh, they don't have that material to hold the teeth in, so they can slide out very easily. So when you do find the skull, you want to be careful with it. Oh, look at that. we got a big something in here. Uh, these are more leg bones. Now, I don't know how many legs these things have, but this is probably more than one animal uh, that we've got in here because uh, we've got way too many leg bones for one animal. And, oh, look, this here is actually a different type. So we know now we have this type of pelvic bone and we had this type of pelvic bone. So in this, and in this one pellet, we have a shrew and we have a rodent, okay? Uh, this one here, oh no, I'm definite that this one is a shrew. So they've got a little bit different uh, type of hips there. Uh, so let's see what we can find. So there may be two skulls in here. Uh, I'm not, that's just a little leg bone. Uh, all of these bones, this is a rib. <laughs> if you get a close up on that one there, that one is a rib. Uh, you can see that there. Uh, so that's one of these ribs here. And as you can see, I'm just setting all this to the side for now, so we have a little bit of time to look at it in the microscopes, okay? Um, and when we're looking at these ones here, we'll probably spend more time uh, in the microscope with a little less magnification uh, because we just want to see um, kind of what's going on there. Now, I just pulled out a big group of ribs. This is like a whole bunch of ribs right here. This is um, if, yeah, I want my baby back, baby back. This is, I've got a lot of ribs that I just pulled out of there. So I'm actually gonna set those over here because they're all gonna look the same under the microscope. Uh, so we're not gonna see any big differences there. So we're mainly putting on our little tray here, the things that we're gonna wanna check out with the microscope. So this, uh, that was a lot of ribs. I've got more ribs going on in here. Uh, but I may have something larger in this piece right here. So I'm going to scooch this to the side. Uh, there's another little um, hip bone right here, or pelvic bone. And like I say, we're still searching for that skull. Uh, I don't want this to end up being like uh, when they opened um, <laughs> the vault and there was nothing in there. So I don't think that'll happen though. I think we will definitely find at least, oh, I think we may have just found a skull. So I'm being very gentle now. Yep, so I'm being very gentle now. You can see here uh, that we just see that lighter area. I'm not digging very hard. I'm being very gentle because the skull has got some very fragile bones in it. So we want to keep that skull as intact as we can while cleaning off our other material, okay? So this is definitely a skull. I don't know if you can see it already there. Um, it's getting there. Yep, you can see those little eye sockets on that skull there, kind of as it's hiding in, the, uh, in the, all of the hair. So we're going to clean this out, and we're going to see if we can get that skull, and then we're going to put it under the microscope so we can kind of see what these bones look like. Now, you don't need a microscope to do this. I mean, they are awesome on their own. Um, but you can use a microscope or maybe a magnifying glass. Uh, you can pick up an inexpensive mic magnifying glass uh, for next to nothing, uh, and you can pick up an inexpensive telescope. Uh, if you watch some of our, of our uh, earlier episodes, you'll see that uh, a, teles or a microscope is now pretty in it. Wow, look at that, is now pretty inexpensive. Sorry, I got distracted. Uh, we've got a good, uh, this is the inside here, right? So that would be like the top of the, uh, animal's mouth, and we'll try to identify this skull once if I can get it clean enough to identify it uh, without breaking it up too much. So we see that we have a nice rounded nose, okay? Uh, so if we look at our chart here, 
I, I can pretty much tell you it's going to be this rodent here because we have that nice rounded nose, okay? So we know that we've already found, uh, if we use our, our logic there, uh, we've already found the hip bones or the pelvic bones of a rodent that we could identify as rodent bones. Uh, and so now we know by looking at this skull here that this is a rodent skull, okay? I've got some other pieces of bone here that may have been the back of the skull. It's very thin on the back of the skull. I'm gonna clean this up just enough to get it under the microscope and then we will go from there. So I want to make sure we have time to check this guy out. And then uh, while we're looking at it, I'll see if we can find another. Oh, there we go. That's what I was after, trying to get that big piece off there. So I've got it pretty clean now clean enough that we can see what's going on. And we're gonna head on over to the microscope so we can look at our bones, okay? Now remember, you don't need a microscope. There was a little bit of material. There we go, good. So you can see, if you look at this guy now, uh, you can see where the skull was crushed. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that was what or how the owl got it. Uh, that could have happened in the stomach. I could have done it when I was cleaning it up, but we have now a awesome little skull here. And so what we're gonna do with this skull is we're gonna take it and we are going to put it under our microscope. So you can see this skull nice and close. Now, due to the magic of television, uh, I took just a second to actually dig out two more skulls from this uh, little thing here, and there may be more in there. But let's check this guy out first. So yeah, I dug these, like I say, magic of television. Here you go, I just found two more skulls in there. I really did find them in that same owl pellet. Um, but we want to pull this guy up under our microscope here. Now you can see, uh, as we're looking at this, there's a lot of fibers there. Those fibers are uh, all of the little hair uh, from the mixed rodents, right? So it could be from a number of rodents that were getting that hair because I did find three skulls. Now we knew we had more than two animals in there because we found different types of hip bones, right? Uh, so if we look here, the part that I'd like to show you is the teeth, okay? Uh, if we can get it turned around here, there you go. And I would like to show you its cute little teeth, okay? Uh, the teeth there, let me see, right here, there you go. Uh, those teeth are nice and yellow, right? Because our rats hardly ever brush their teeth. Um, but there are, we can see those teeth in that skull. Now I'm gonna bring another skull into play right here where we are. This one here, uh, as I found like during the pause there, look at this guy, this guy is awesome, right? Uh, so we see a pretty clear skull right here. Um, that elongated skull, this one is a very long skull. So we knew, again, we had found our uh, pelvic bone from our shrew. This is actually the skull from a shrew. Now, if you look, this looks a lot more uh, like that. The, those Geiger alien kind of creatures going on there. Uh, that nice long skull, right? We see that nice long skull. Uh, and it has got a very slope or a very good slope down to the teeth uh, and we see those eyeballs there right so we can really see the eye sockets this is a great skull uh, that entire skull cap is intact now the reason that, that that's a rarity uh, is that skull cap is very thin right so we can see if we put the under light that you can see right through that skull there so it's very thin on that skull cap now I also have a little bitty skull uh, that we found in there also, okay? Now, I don't think it's necessarily a youth of something, it could have been, uh, but it is, it is considerably smaller. I think it's a different type of skull, but I don't know because we haven't dug through all of our pieces yet. Uh, but this skull here, we can see those teeth. I would lean toward it still being a rodent of some sort, uh, but we don't know. Yeah, see, so you see a good shot of those teeth right there. Those little bitty teeth, those nice yellow teeth, that's because of that iron. Uh, and then we can see the, uh, all of the little fibers on that skull. Now when you have these, if you're doing these little pellets at home, um, I'm gonna bring in a jawbone underneath our microscope. 
This was the jawbone that was in that longer skull that we found. Uh, so we can see here this jawbone. If we get it just right, there you go. You can see those little bitty teeth. Let me dial it in a little. There you go. You can see those uh, pirate looking <laughs> crusty teeth there. Uh, so this is the bottom jaw from that skull, from this skull here uh, that we saw that longer skull. So that longer one, this was the bottom jaw. It was still in place. Now all of the ligaments and things were gone, but it was still in place. So we still had that bottom jaw. Okay. Now, if you do find one with the teeth intact, be very careful because as I said, those teeth can come out very easily. Uh, if you are doing this one at home, um, I have this big old pile of what you would think may be waste. Okay. Uh, we have all of our bones here. Um, but this pile here, I would not throw it away, okay? Because there is going to be a lot, a lot, a lot of bones in this pile, okay? So if you're doing an owl pellet at home, uh, all of this stuff that looks like just like fluff, I would get down and continue having those kiddos separate it. Uh, if we look, I just from looking here, I found another jawbone, okay? Uh, I, this is another bottom jaw. Uh, that I get from just looking for a second. But the more you look through here, the more that you will find. Now we found in one, in one owl pellet, we found at least two different species. Okay. Uh, so this owl, oh wait, I got a rib on my paper. There was a rib stuck to my finger. Um, so we have a rodent, right? Which could be a rat, a mouse, something like that. Uh, and a shrew. We found both of those. We found two of what are probably rodents, maybe different kinds. So this owl uh, had went on a feast. <laughs> right? Uh, and, uh, and we saw how he got that rodent uh, and a couple rodents, maybe a, f a family. That sounds sad, but that's nature. Uh, and all of that was digested and the, and the owl was able to use everything it needed. Uh, and then it coughed up this owl pellet. So owl pellets, while they may sound disgusting, are a wonderful amount of fun uh, for your kiddos. Uh, or for adults. <laughs> we have had adults uh, sitting around digging in owl pellets and they will get into it just as much as kids. Now, if you want, you can soak this in just water uh, and most of that material will break off and you'll have a nice clean skull. Uh, you know, if you want to get more into it, you can look at ways on the internet. But uh, we have a wonderful family of rodents <laughs> that we have found in our little owl pellet today. Okay? So, uh, thank you for watching the Ray Kitty Science Project, uh, and uh, don't forget, science shows you matter.